call this meeting to order. Uh, before I do that, let me take that back. Let me hit the, I know that we're uh, on GCTV, but let me just hit the record button also. Nothing the matter with belts and suspenders. Good evening and welcome to the January 13th edition of the Board of Selectmen. I call this meeting to order at 631. Uh, next order of business is public comment. Is there any public comments? Any public comment? Okay, hearing none. What I would ask, uh, since uh, we have the, uh, the Board of Education Chair here, I would ask that uh, since he's gonna talk to us about the administrator's contract, I would ask that we uh, just uh, take that, uh, that would be item five. We'll take item five first, and then we'll get into our regular, our, our regular meeting. Is um, that okay with everybody? It's okay with me. Okay. It's fine. Okay, so the, uh, the um, on the agenda is the consider and act upon the ratification of the East Grammy Administrators Association contract. Uh, this is one of the contracts that comes to the Board of Selectmen. We can uh, we can not do anything, and then after 30 days, it becomes uh, ratified, or we can uh, uh, make a, uh, a motion to ratify uh, as presented, or we uh, can take it to town meeting. So um, what uh, I invited Bob Paskowitz, who is our uh, our uh, Board of Education uh, Chair to come and talk to us uh, about the contract. Uh, and Bob, would you like to walk us through? Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, sorry I'm here alone tonight, but the Board of Ed is having a budget workshop at the present time that I was at. And I'll switch back to it. We had some work we're certainly trying to get done for this year. Uh, but we're happy to say that we've uh, settled an agreement with our administrators, a three-year agreement uh, that will cover Let's see, the years 2021 to 2024, it was actually an excellent negotiations period. Uh, John Welsh, who was our negotiating committee chair, expressed appreciation to the East Granby Administrators Association on participating in an exceptionally professional negotiation session. It went very well. We, we appreciated uh, doing it. Uh, okay, over in the three the three-year contract, uh, I gave you guys a summary. I also have printed what's up, what the costs are. Uh, but I'll quickly, uh, for the public, go through it. Again, over three years, uh, the total agreed upon is 6.96 over three years, uh, broken down into annual increases of 2.42, 2.32, and 2.22%. Now, with that said, uh, one thing we like to say is the state average was 7.24%, or 0.24% over three years, or 2.41 per year. So. We are, we're below the state averages and, you know, I don't think we could really expect to do anything more than that because if we have with our negotiations process that you guys are certainly aware of, if we push something into arbitration and arbiter is going to make the decision and not the, not the administrators and not the board of ed and not the community. So they work very diligently with us to keep it below the average because East Granby tends to be slightly above average when you look statewide, we're probably in the top third. Uh, we have de very dedicated staff. And even though we say they're the top third, there's a huge salary uh, difference between our administrators and you could have administrators as close by as the town of Simsbury. So with that said, you know, we only have a few administrators. We have a principal at each school. We have a director of curriculum and we have a special ed director of pupil services and we have one high school assistant principal that we've just uh, filled that seat last week. That seat's been vacant uh, for the year. So we've done that. And again, 6.96 over three years uh, seemed to be pretty reasonable. We also were able to get an insurance increase of 0.5% of employee premium share increase each year, depending upon the insurance they're taking. It'll be 0.5 each year. So it'll be uh, one and a half percent over three years. We've also added some things for uh, our ability in the contract to uh, change a couple holidays. 
if we wanted to have school on Columbus Day, we could swap Columbus Day for another vacation day in their contract because uh, their old contract said they had Columbus Day and also the possibility of Veterans Day. Uh, some school systems have school on Veterans Day and they spend the whole day doing Veterans Day activities. And that's an activity the board was thinking about. But again, we had to negotiate it because it would be a change in holidays. Uh, we also had an insurance benefits, uh, the language to be to change and be consistent with the recent language we had for the teacher's contract. So we're on the same page. Uh, district our size needs to combine everyone for insurance. Uh, so that was done. Uh, with that said, I would say the net change for next year, and I'm including salary increases and benefits and the net change for 21-22 for all the administrators, $46,000. $777. Uh, the year 22-23, the net change, which is an increase, these are all increases, will be $50,733. And year three is $54,294. Uh, total salaries just this year for all our administrators is uh, $1,033,747. So uh, that's pretty much what I have, and I'd be willing to answer any questions if I could from the board. Well, th thank you uh, for that, Bob. I would also mention in passing that uh, Selectman Ziobro is on the Board of Education also, and I believe he was on the, uh, he was also on the negotiation committee. That is correct. So, um, thank you. Uh, so, um, are there any questions or comments? Bob, just one question. Um, the uh, was it that we weren't competitive with the director of curriculum, yeah, professional she, development? Yeah, that that salary is below everyone's, and she's actually has taken on you know some other duties as well. And their hope was to get her up uh, pretty close to where they were. And we've started doing it slowly, but we weren't going to do it all at once. But there is that differential that's lower than all the rest. You're correct. Okay, thank you. Bob, I had one comment or question. One thing I didn't notice on the summary sheet difference was uh, difference between the two contracts. There's also an additional quarter percent increase in uh, 403B contributions to the plan. Was that taken into consideration in these dollar amounts? When I gave you, that included the annuities, John, yes. When I gave the total increase, uh, that this year the annuities added, or I'm sorry, next year the annuities is 21205 so between that and the salary, yes, get the 46. So the number I gave you did uh, include the increase. You're right, I forgot to say the uh, fourth percent of the annuity increase. But those numbers are included. Right. And uh, just to, uh, to clarify, that was a quarter of a percent, Bob? Yes. Okay. Sometimes on Zoom, you're not sure if it's a quarter of a percent or 4%. So I, I didn't think it was 4%, but uh, no. Wanted to clarify. Thank you. Uh, any uh, any additional uh, comments or questions? Well, I uh, certainly appreciate the fact that you came in. Uh, you, you were able to come and explain it to us. Uh, I would mention uh, that we uh, also in our package I provided the actual contract uh, along with the summary that uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Paskowitz just just reviewed. Uh, the, uh, you know, certainly uh, it's um, difficult economic times, uh, but I think also uh, uh, it was uh, certainly if being below the state average, uh, I think was a, a was a good accomplishment by the, uh, by the committee. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is a, a small uh, administrative staff, um, but a small but loyal. And um, certainly, uh, looks like uh, the contract is, uh, you know, is is uh, a reasonable one with quotation marks on it uh, uh, compared to uh, to other uh, contracts that I've seen in other uh, areas uh, regarding the state. So, okay. Uh, so our motion, our, our uh, agenda item is to consider and act upon 
So we, we've done the considering, I think, so it's time to act upon. Is there? I'll, yeah, I'll make a motion that uh, the Board of Selectmen approve the uh, contract as presented. Okay, thank you. And hearing no second, I'll make the second. And that opens it up for discussion. Any discussion? I'd like to say I didn't vote for this in the past because I know this is a tough year and we're looking at difficult times for people to be paying, you know, taxes and ha ha get handing out raises at a time when uh, people don't have money to even buy food. It's just, I think, unconscionable. So I voted no on it in the past. I did not participate in any of the negotiations for it because I was too busy at work, but I am on the board of uh, Ed, so I'm going to abstain from it, but my comment is it's something that I don't think the should pass, but, you know, okay, I, know I know we're not the people that actually make that decision, but we could bring it to town vote and let the people decide if they want it or not, so... Yeah, um, and, and I certainly understand and respect your comments. Uh, my uh, my uh, feeling is uh, that uh, you know the board of education is elected by the townspeople. Uh, they entered in good faith. It appears like uh, the administrators did also, and um, you know, and I I would be in favor of the motion as proposed. Joe, any additional comment for you? Yeah, just a couple of comments. Uh, one, I, I certainly think the administrators in the school do a fantastic job. This has been a heck of a period of time as well, and they've guided us through this, which uh, hasn't been easy. Um, the uh, second part is that I, I think people in town have really stepped up and supported the town and uh, you know, we have some reports coming up from the uh, town treasurer that show uh, people are, are really cooperating and doing the best they can. And I think uh, one of the reasons for that is that they want the town to continue the services that they have and continue the education that they have. Uh, so I, I think the uh, contract is appropriate. And then also being a former board of ed chair and negotiating some of these contracts, when you're doing that, you're really involved and you know more than just about anyone else. And I always felt it was a, you know, kind of a difficult thing to, to then have the contract go before uh, other folks who really weren't as knowledgeable or involved, uh, especially this contract, because it is a much smaller contract. So I too am in favor of uh, approving this and uh, would like to see it uh, approved. Okay, uh, with uh, no further comments, uh, I'll call for a, a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstention? Abstain. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you, Bob, for your, uh, for Thank your you, insights. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate having. We certainly appreciate what all of our teachers and administrators do, as we appreciate all that our town employees have been doing during this time. So everyone has really stepped up this year. You're right, Jim. It's uh, been I've been in this field for 45 years and never seen anything like this. And I think we Brandy can stand proud. Our kids are in school. Schools are doing well. Everything's functioning. Uh, we're staying within budget. Uh, everything's right. Everything right now. And it could change quickly, but right now it's going very well. So we want to keep it that way. We do understand we see the COVID numbers are going up slightly. So we certainly keep an eye on that stuff day to day. But uh, thank you for having us, and I will see you guys later. I got to get back to the Board of Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, guys. Okay. Uh, moving back up to correspondence, which is number three. There's the, uh, the audit that I sent electronically, and I also provided a hard copy for, for John. Uh, it was reviewed with the, uh, by the auditors with the Board of Finance at their last meeting. Uh, it was, a, a, as they would say, a clean audit with, uh, uh, with no uh, 
uh, no concerns, uh, material concerns of what they call it, no material concerns um, uh, from uh, their look-see at the audit this year. Also gave you a correspondence from the network. Uh, the the uh, town hall employees made some donations along with townspeople stuffing the cruiser and uh, it went to uh, the, uh, the network uh, who helps uh, um, battered children and, uh, and, and adults. Uh, and uh, I thought it was worthwhile just to you know, put the thank you in there, but especially the handwritten thank you from many, many people. And you know, watching my son open his gifts from you was priceless and I cried. I'm beyond amazed and thankful. And, you know, that's just one of them. There there's must be a dozen thank yous in there. So uh, if you wonder if, uh, if sometimes what we do uh, as residents uh, and as members of the human race uh, to help others, if you sometimes wonder if it makes a difference, well, you uh, in living color, uh, you've got... Uh, Seven, uh, 12, 15 households that uh, were impacted positively by the residents of East Granby. So, fantastic. The uh, Krog legislative agenda for 2021, uh, just uh, I can close that for you. Uh, the, uh, uh, that was approved by Krog, and those are their, what they're looking at. The um, uh, general, uh, the uh, general government financials. I don't have my narrative, uh, but I will have the narrative and I will send it to you. Overall, it's a, you know it's going to be a close year, but we're we're right on the line right now. Uh, we're not in the contingency, uh, but we're right on the line. So uh, we've got some uh, you know some uh, concerns in the uh, uh, fire, uh, police, uh, and um, data services at this point. But I'll give you a full summary. The, uh, also included a memo to the Board of Finance from the Treasurer, uh, and it's regarding the municipal grants and aid. So what uh, what uh, the Treasurer does is the and the auditor is they check to make sure that the grants and aid, uh, which are specified for uh, the uh, road projects or uh, approved capital projects, uh, they make sure that the money is properly uh, spent, and uh, so. They cleaned up the years 2017 through 2019, and, uh, and so they're making a uh, the board of finance will make a transfer of $98,000 of municipal grants and aid fund to the capital fund uh, from the capital fund to the town aid road fund, and all of the money that's in the town aid road fund gets specifically spent on roads. So. It's just doing some bookkeeping to clean it up and make sure that we're spending the money the way we should. And in this particular case, about $100,000 more will be going into uh, uh, the um, Town Aid Road Fund. Uh, and, um, and any additional dollars uh, from grants and aid will go in there also. Uh, sometime in July, uh, we will uh, go out for bonding and I think it makes sense we'll have the conversation going forward but whatever money we have uh, in the grants and aid may make sense to apply towards uh, uh, the bond uh, so that we go out for bonding for less money so uh, the bond as it stands now the authorization was nine million nine hundred and seventy one thousand uh, we may be able to uh, we may be able to uh, go for a note lower than that using the municipal, uh, uh, the town aid road funds, the, the municipal grant and aid funds that are in the town aid road fund. So that's um, just wanted to let you know that that was rather a technical thing going on, but just letting you know that we're making sure that we do what we're supposed to be doing. And um, also uh, gave you the um, uh, report uh, from the state on uh, the, uh, Floydville Bridge. Uh, there's the uh, scour issue that is being addressed. There was an RFP that the building committee did where the, the uh, and awarded uh, to engineers. The engineers are working on it. Uh, John, at our next meeting of the building committee, they're going to, uh, uh, there'll be uh, more information of where the status is. And we are meeting uh, the town engineer, uh, the 
a public works supervisor myself, a public works director myself are meeting with WMC, who is the company, on Friday so that we can see what they've done, what they need to do so that we can uh, resolve this issue. Uh, so uh, the bridge is, is sound, uh, but the scour is an issue that needs to be uh, corrected. Joe, uh, I got uh, 93, uh, uh, 93 treasurer report in there per your request. Uh, they uh, said, so I've got uh, July through uh, 1130. I've got uh, 2020 and 2019 uh, for comparison. I also have the year end, now that the audit was finished, the year end uh, report uh, was uh, uh, it was finalized uh, by the treasurer. Uh, and I also, uh, for comparison's sake, did uh, provide uh, the 2019 final too. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Jim. And uh, it really, uh, at least in my case, helped me kind of switch back and forth and see where we were this year, and this year in particular because of everything going on. So thank you very much for that. Absolutely, and the, uh, it was nice looking at the compare a quick comparison of 2019 and 2020. So. It, it was it was surprising, and uh, it was you know very encouraging. The um, next report is from the tax collector. Uh, the uh, we have uh, seventy one point one three percent collected as of. Uh, December 31st last year at this time, it was 70.04%. So the collection rate is about 1% better uh, than it was last year. A lot of times that's just people's tax planning in December. They uh, they look at uh, their uh, their taxes and say, well, you know, I, I, why don't I get an, a, another deductible expense uh, in the current year. So it, it's not necessarily, first of all, we almost, uh, we ended up with a 99% collection rate. Uh, so I don't think it really means anything other than the fact that some people decided to pay their taxes a little early. But overall, the trend is, uh, is, uh, is positive and good compared to last year. The, um, I put a thank you in from one of our residents uh, regarding the uh, footwear with care program that the town uh, assisted uh, uh, folks in Har homeless in Hartford where they, there's a police officer, uh, Hartford police officer that actually lives in East Granby uh, who uh, has uh, done an awful lot of work towards this. And uh, he even has a, a, a West Hartford uh, shoe shop that helps. And what they do is they provide uh, uh, shoes and boots, especially during the winter time. Uh, and uh, they uh, assist with needs for, for homeless uh, Mr. Forney, uh, who's a resident, along with a couple other residents in town, also uh, volunteered to assist. And so on behalf of Footwear with Care, uh, the, um, uh, he wrote a thank you. And uh, he was uh, just uh, appreciative of everything that's been donated by residents. We had put it on Facebook uh, for residents that they could fill a bin outside the Senior Community Center. And he did three full car loads of supplies. So thanks to the residents of East Granby. Just for your edification, I put in the calendar for uh, the Board of Finance, especially as it pertains to uh, the budget process. Um, got some good news uh, from the state regarding the Corona Relief Fund, that's CRF. Uh, so, you know, as you, you'll remember that we did uh, get some money uh, uh, from the state. Uh, the number eludes me now, but I would think it was 20 some odd thousand dollars and uh, uh, 20, about 22 or $23,000. And uh, uh, it was things that FEMA had kicked out. Well, there was additional funds that were available, so we got another an additional thirty-five thousand four hundred thirty-eight dollars to put towards uh, uh, any COVID-related expenses, and they extended it so that it actually will be expenses that go all the way to the end of, uh, of the current fiscal year, uh, the current calendar year. So that's all good news, and uh, so we got two days' notice that we needed to apply for it. We uh, we're able to do so and we got approved and we got an additional $35,000 to help offset some expenses. 
Uh, also, I gave you a news article just because uh, it was topical uh, regarding the five new laws of January 1st. One was uh, regarding pol police accountability. Two was emerging emergency insulin prescriptions. Uh, three was phasing out taxes on pensions um, and for some folks that qualify. And that um, I believe that's year two or three of that. Uh, and also um, uh, the, uh, uh, they talked about uh, the family leave um, the, where uh, a half a percent uh, is deducted from uh, uh, workers' uh, uh, payroll uh, for the Family Leave Act, uh, which creates, um, for lack of a better phrase, and to simplify it, it creates uh, some sick days that they can use. Uh, the first year is to fund it. The second year, would people would be able to use it. Uh, it um, doesn't have any relevance to the town because it's not uh, municipalities were uh, municipalities were exempted uh, along with state uh, was exempted unless it's something that gets bargained into the bargaining unit. Uh, and the last thing uh, was the increased electric uh, regulation, especially regarding uh, the the recent storm and some some uh, serious issues. So the, uh, the, the, all that took place January 1st. Uh, also gave you, just because I thought it was a nice presentation, uh, it, the 130 acre parcel, the, uh, the um, in town, undeveloped parcel, the owners brought in uh, the Silverman Group who made uh, a, a concept plan and a presentation to the planning and zoning on December 29th. Uh, there's a combination of uh, uh, having some uh, perhaps residential component in there and also having uh, a warehouse component. So the, uh, that's, um, I, I just thought it was uh, uh, nice to see the conceptual look at it and that would be something that would be decided on by the Board of Selectmen. I'm sorry, by not the Board of Selectmen, we don't do land use, uh, by the planning and zoning. Joe, if you recall, um, the uh, I believe that uh, the um, one of the regulations that was adopted last night uh, uh, extended the village center zone. Uh, do you remember that correctly? That could have that could impact this. My understanding was that they did change the zoning in this particular area to the Commerce Park transitional zone, right. which um, does have a limit, I believe, of three hundred thousand square foot building and opens it up to additional uses that uh, weren't permitted before. I think that- I think your recollection is correct, yeah. yeah. The uh, next piece of business is from, uh, of Jim, correspondence. Jim, Jim, can I say something? I, the, the, the thing I see here from uh, this uh, developer, I think this is pretty good plan for the town of East Cranby. He's got some big warehouses thrown in here, but they're all the way in the back and buffered well with trees and berms. And he has residential, nice developments in the front. So like the warehouses and all that would never be seen. So I really do hope that the town seriously considers this. I think that, I think, uh, and you know, I don't want to speak for the planning and zoning, so I won't, but I will say that with the uh, zoning regulation, it still allows distribution center. I don't think it would be as large as that concept plan. Moving on to the uh, legislative priorities uh, from cost, uh, with the, uh, the concern about COVID-19 uh, related challenges, preserving municipal aid, rejecting the effort to shift teachers' pensions costs to towns. Uh, I was on uh, a meeting uh, today that the governor spoke. Governor said that he was not looking to revisit the uh, teachers' pension uh, that they looked at uh, two, three years ago. So that's good. And also he is looking to make the towns, uh, keep the towns whole and not look to take away uh, funding. So whether he, uh, he and the legislature are able to do that uh, remains to be seen. Uh, and uh, the uh, upcoming state budget uh, negotiation, state, yeah, I guess it is negotiations. The upcoming state budget uh, will, uh, they'll be working on it in February and March, I'm sure. Also includes a letter that I uh, sent uh, uh, to the planning and zoning uh, regarding uh, 
the request from Economic Development uh, that uh, so the Economic Development Commission is an advisory commission. Uh, they uh, requested to me uh, that the uh, that the Board of Selectmen look at um, at sign regulations. The sign regulations are in our jurisdiction, as we did say at a previous meeting. Uh, but I sent a letter to uh, the uh, uh, to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, endorsing uh, the uh, uh, revisiting and perhaps loosening, hopefully loosening the signing regulations. So. Jim, I didn't hear anything about that last evening. Did you? I was. I, I didn't join the meeting. For I had another meeting, so I didn't join the meeting until seven thirty. I, I, uh, I'll, I'll find out why it wasn't part of the correspondence. Yeah, it was interesting. I just, you know, because I joined late, I missed that that part. So. It, it didn't come up at all. And I was more concerned that it could have come up at the end. No, no, it did not. That's odd. I, I, I don't understand that because there was a, you know, a concern from the point of view of small businesses struggling through the pandemic and that, um, you know, once the pandemic ends, this would also be beneficial as well. But, oh, well. I'll, uh, I'll look into it, Joe. Thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that it wasn't at least uh, uh, brought to everybody's attention uh, and then you know, let them you know, decide what they want to do. But um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pursue this. Uh, next piece of correspondence is just to let you know that the tax deferral program uh, is uh, is going uh, forward. We we're letting residents know, similar to July, that they can get in a. Uh, there's always 30 days uh, grace period. Uh, you get the bill is due January 1st, but you get until the end of the month to to pay it. And for folks uh, that are being impacted by financially by COVID, they are able to get an additional 60 days. We put it on our website. We publicize it on Facebook, the town Facebook page, and community, East Granby community. And and just wanted to let you know that it's uh, uh, we're soliciting and making it people understand that they do have an uh, ability to talk to the tax collector and fill out a form and get a deferral for an additional 60 days if that's what they need. So, Jim, to make it clear, this is not automatic. They have to come in and fill out a form Correct. to get the uh, deferral. Correct. Otherwise, they'll be charged interest after the end of January. Correct. They they need to they need to request it. Right, because in some other towns it's automatic, but in our town it's not. No. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. The, uh, just a uh, let's got the EDC activities report. Uh, which, um, if I was thinking a little bit clearer, I would have just. Uh, waited until 6B on that, but I'll, I'll go through it now since I have any correspondence. Um, the Commerce Park Transitional Zone was approved uh, last night's meeting. There was a presentation on uh, 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 School Street, 36 uh, units, uh, apartment units uh, in, the, in two buildings with retail down on the first floor. And over on Nicholson, uh, which uh, is off of East Street, there was a uh, 120 apartment uh, project that was discussed. Uh, in both cases, there are one and two bedroom uh, um, units. Uh, and uh, they went on Nicholson, uh, has quite a lot of amenities. Uh, and uh, it, would, uh, it appears uh, the plan in, includes uh, a sidewalk that would actually go to where Planet Fitness is now. Uh, you know, so, uh, so anyway, or, or it was stopped because there's some uh, some issues that the with the drains and head wall uh, that would have to be moved. That would be something that the town would consider doing if if this could, went forward. The whole idea is to uh, get uh, um, good quality apartments uh, so that people are able to either use them when they're starting out or uh, use them when they're downsizing their houses. Uh, and create uh, some uh, start to create some uh, foot traffic uh, in the village center area. So uh, the, the both of those were, uh, projects uh, were uh, as a result of previous uh, uh, planning and zoning changes and the regulations. And um, 
and it seems like uh, uh, there's some interest in, in doing things with that. Uh, there's, you know, the hearings were uh, were continued so that the next plan in zoning, they will continue to uh, discuss it and get input uh, from uh, residents. And there was, uh, at one time, there was about 60 people on the plan and zoning uh, meeting, and there was uh, many, many comments uh, uh, regarding uh, some concerns that uh, folks on Schoolhouse Landing had regarding the proximity of the development to uh, some of their backyards. And there were uh, some concerns mentioned uh, from Harvest and Crystal regarding uh, the uh, Nicholson project uh, that is uh, being assessed by the uh, planning and zoning. And um, you know, next meeting or the meeting after they'll they'll make a decision. Uh, also, just Jim, uh, yeah. Jim, could I just chime in here for a minute? Um, I'm not sure it's the right time or whatever, but but I do want to pick up on what you just said about the uh, comments. And and I also want to go to something that we've talked about before, and that is um, the, it seems like planning and zoning has uh, been making changes to implement the plan of conservation and development. Part of that is the, uh, the village district uh, and the village center and uh, I, I just want to go back to something that I've said before, and um, I, I'm not 100% sure how you feel, John, but I, I wanted to mention that one of the difficulties I think people are having, especially at these public hearings, is understanding the concept of the village center and the village district, what it uh, will look like, what the potential is. Um, and it's difficult to get that from the plan of conservation and development. I just think it's important sooner rather than later that uh, we act on that uh, village district uh, study and get something so that people can see this and not just look at it from the point of view of it's too close to my backyard or it may lower my home value or whatever. Uh, just seeing what the town is trying to accomplish that will work for everyone and maybe things need to be changed uh, within that. But I think it would help if people can see uh, what everyone's trying to do and what everyone's trying to accomplish. And uh, as you mentioned, the village center uh, study is part of our capital plan for this year. So, yeah. And uh, I just got a, a couple additional things. One is uh, we, uh, um, we on the Hawk, uh, which is the pedestrian crossing on uh, Route uh, 20. Uh, John, you don't. Uh, John and Joe, you don't have this. This just came in. Um, is the uh, on the pedestrian crossing on Route 20? Uh, it, it was uh, all the engineering was done. It went out for bid for construction. It was approved uh, by the state. It's uh, uh, who is providing the funding. Uh, it's uh, although it's the money goes through us. It's a local project. Uh, what they call a local project. The bid was $171,159. Um, the, uh, it's at the attorneys now to make sure that the, die, uh, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. It will start once signed, hopefully with materials permitting, uh, it will be finished this year. So we've been working on this for a long time and the light is at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's a, uh, it's a uh, yellow and red uh, light uh, that would be active, still it depends on activation. By, uh, by the pedestrians or by the uh, uh, bicyclists, but it's, uh, what it does is uh, it provides a yellow light and then it goes to a red light. Uh, so, uh, you know, part of the concern people had was, oh, the yellow lights aren't over the center of the road and people don't know what it means. Well, they, everybody knows what a red light means. So uh, we, uh, the only reason I mentioned about materials permitting is, believe it or not, the, the mast is an engineered mast that is uh, special, but not necessarily out of the ordinary, but it's something that there's a, uh, uh, last I knew there was a six month lead time on the production of the mast. So that, you know, they can, once this is all assigned, they can go ahead uh, and start to do everything that they need to do and then get it all ready for the mast. And then the, when the mast comes and they can, they can finish the project. So that's all good news. And the uh, uh, one other additional is uh, 
the uh, we sold the surplus fire vehicle, the one we thought we were going to use for uh, 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 public works. Turned out that it wasn't uh, going to work for public works, especially there was a lot of work that was going to need to be done to, to make it uh, something that could be used by public works. So uh, we uh, we uh, sold it as surplus uh, and we got $4,100 uh, for the 36 year old uh, vehicle. And uh, that money will go back uh, to you. I'll check to see uh, what, if it was uh, mentioned, if it was mentioned on the original uh, thing in 18, 1984, uh, it would go back to capital, then it goes to capital. Otherwise it goes to the general fund. And the last additional is uh, the um, uh, MDC is initiating a design of upgrades at the Paquanic Water Pollution Facility. Uh, and it's a $12,762,000 project uh, by the agreements from 1985. They look for money from the CAA and from the town of East Granby. Um, the, uh, uh, it, uh, the estimated con con contribution would be $262,000. If there's not a state grant, they anticipate a state grant, but if there wasn't, that would be an additional $112,000. We're at the beginning part of this. They've just notified us about this. They're looking to award the contract in August of 2021 uh, and be complete by January 20th of uh, January 2023. Um, and um, the uh, so uh, we'll get more information from them and more schedules and, and cost estimates and things like that. But I wanted to make you aware of it. Also, as the WPCA, we know that we need to deal with the sewer deficit. Uh, and now we've got additional uh, uh, money that we're going to have to to look at. We do have some money. Uh, in uh, a special project fund, I believe, uh, well, it's on the, the, um, the charges report. I think it's 150,000, but we will have to have further uh, discussion about what we're going to do to get the uh, WPCA, what the, we as the WPCA is going to do to get the sewer fund back to solvency. We did talk about it um, before, and it was something that was uh, mentioned in the audit and um, also the $262,000 surprise. Jim, Jim, is this a facility that the town actually uses for sewage? Yes, John. It's it's the Poquatic, uh, the uh, the part of the waste that is uh, that that the town creates the uh, sewage uh, does go uh, to the um, pollution facility. It, it makes its way all all the way over to there. So and so it yes. doesn't go go to the MDC treatment plants. Just that that is the MDC treatment plant. Okay, for this area. For this area, it's it's in one. Uh, is that Windsor or Windsor Locks? Windsor Lock, yeah. Next piece of, uh, of uh, business is the uh, uh, minutes uh, from December 16th. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second that. Okay, uh, made a second at any uh, Discussion, comments, questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. In, in, in old business, uh, we have uh, the school, town, and building committee report. Um, the uh, I don't think we've, uh, since our last meeting, there's been any new, uh, additional meeting of the uh, of the building committee, but just to give you an update uh, regarding the uh, electricity upgrade over at Allgrove, uh, work uh, is, um, I believe two electric poles were installed by Eversource. So they're, uh, you know, it's up to them when they do the service, but at least progress has happened there. The electrical contractor uh, that is working for the building committee uh, is uh, working on Wednesdays when the school is way empty. And so there's progress on, on, uh, on both uh, fronts. Uh, and um, the uh, uh, 
building uh, committee will uh, has uh, finalized the what kind of air conditioning which would be going in, and it's the ductless split units, and uh, there will be uh, an a RFP that will be approved, uh, considered and acted upon by the building committee next Thursday, that will uh, go out for uh, for bids on the. Uh, on the air conditioning and, and residual work. Uh, economic development report, we really already talked about it. Uh, tax incentives, we've got no new information, uh, nor do we have any new information on the back office shared services opportunities. I have been in contact with the uh, Board of Finance chair on that, and there's a member, if maybe even two members, of the Board of Finance, I want to assist us on that. Um, so, uh, and part of that is looking at the back office opportunities between the schools and the, the town. Um, so we, we're, we'll have that in the front burner in February and March. Uh, Long-term uh, recovery committee report, the next meeting is January 21st in Saturday's edition of the Let's Talk Turkey that will be received by people in three days. There's a survey, uh, it's a sizable survey, uh, it's six pages long, it's 28 questions, but what it is is the long-term recovery committee uh, based on what other towns have done, uh, surveying residents to see, uh, get a better idea of what needs would be beneficial for the uh, committee to recommend to the board of selectmen. Joe, since you're the chair, is there anything else you wanna? No, you summed it up well. Thank you. And on the uh, public safety dispatch agreement, there's no news right now. I have not set up, but will set up soon the meeting with the with the other town uh, and, uh, that we presently get the service from, and uh, then we, uh, as a board of selectmen, will will decide what we're going to do. Jim, you had uh, asked me at one time regarding the Farmington Valley Health District um, if there was a meeting. Um, to just mention anything, do you want me to, or is that something you want to put on a future agenda? Uh, let's uh, let's do it as new business. Okay. Just to keep it clean. Fine. Okay. Uh, the Board of Finance going to new business, discuss FY22 budget drivers. Uh, the uh, Board of Finance has asked us uh, for uh, for drivers. I did some preliminary work uh, and have a budget driver draft narrative um, that uh, that I gave you uh, just to highlight some of it. Uh, the budget cap overall by the state for town budgets is still 2.5%. We get about $2.8 million in state aid. If there is an effect on that, uh, that would affect uh, the town uh, uh, overall revenue stream. Uh, although, as I mentioned, the governor said that he was trying to keep towns whole this year. Um, the uh, something that is not our uh, uh, on our piece of the real estate, but is definitely something that we need to take into consideration, and certainly the board of finance is we are the um, we are currently paying for the uh, school town building. Uh, project and road project with bond anticipation notes, which are interest only. We've got some tremendous deals on that. But anyways, uh, now that we're almost finished with the project, we'll just have a couple of years worth of roads left. It's time to go ahead and, um, and traditionally go to the um, 15, well, we traditionally go to 15 year uh, permanent bonds or bond notes, I should say. And that'll have an impact on the uh, debt service. Uh, so uh, I have reached out to our uh, our uh, bond consultant, and uh, you know have him working on some numbers that can be provided, uh, which I'll provide to you, but it'll be provided to the board of uh, to the board of finance. And I've uh, informed the uh, the chair that uh, that those items are coming. So you've got four, uh, the budget is comprised of, uh, the annual budget is comprised of four, four uh, components. And one is, uh, is Board of Ed budget, two is the Board of Selectmen or General Government budget, three is uh, capital uh, uh, and uh, 
money that's put towards capital projects uh, and the capital fund, and four is uh, debt service. So uh, that is the fourth leg of the chair, uh, and uh, we're getting uh, information so that the Board of Finance can make some informed decision. Uh, at right now, uh, the um, uh, it's uh, the grand list growth. It's difficult to project where we are on that. Uh, what we do know is that uh, COVID has really affected the uh, motor vehicles, and we see a, a pretty large reduction so far in motor vehicles. Uh, so uh, it's um, the grand list will be uh, finished by the assessor by the end of the month. Um, uh, but uh, at this point, uh, like I said, it's a little early to project, but uh, having uh, some loss in motor vehicles compared to the previous year is not good. Also, uh, the uh, just to uh, let you know that the Library Association has seen an increase in their donations uh, again this year uh, that uh, you know may or may not have an impact on us, but I just thought uh, I'd bring it up to you. Um, regarding other additional uh, drivers, labor, town hall, and public uh, works bargaining units contracts end of this year. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, we just uh, uh, received a notification from the two unions where we are going to set up dates and we're going to provide the information that they requested. Uh, and so, so um, uh, right now, uh, we, uh, you know, we're in the preliminary process, but that could have an impact on the upcoming budget. Um, the uh, police contract calls for a uh, uh, a $1,000 increase of the day salary plus a 2% you know, general wage for the upcoming year. So that's 3.5%. That's much higher than what we normally have, but we realized that uh, we had to catch up with the marketplace. We were 10 to $15,000 off the marketplace in uh and surrounding towns. So uh, when we negotiated the police contract, uh, we made a conscious decision to try to get that a little closer. Uh, but uh, so it's not a surprise or anything, um, uh, but it is a uh, 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 labor cost. And uh, and then, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have to see uh, uh, what increments would be for non-union uh, employees. Um, insurance, uh, the property and casualty, uh, they don't have any information yet, but they uh, indicated to me that perhaps 5% uh, would be a decent planning number, 5% uh, increase. Same with health insurance. Uh, the um, uh, uh, partnership 2 or, or point oh, the state, I reached out to them and they said for the current time, use a projection of 4 to 6%. Uh, we've been very fortunate in the past several years uh, where um, we, uh, we, we have had minimal increases. We were, uh, uh, I haven't checked this year, but I know, uh, a year ago I checked and we actually were about the same cost as we were back, uh, when we made the change from Anthem to the partnership. So that's been a, something really good. We anticipate, uh, some retirements coming up, uh, and, uh, that, um, you know, if, if a current employee has, uh, uh, a, a single or a, a employee uh, plus spouse, uh, and you know the replacement person could have family coverage that could uh, impact uh, the insurance costs. Um, also, uh, something that uh, is not anything that that we've discussed before, but we'll discuss as part of the bu budget process is you know there may be some uh, hours that may, we may think uh, make sense to add to positions. And if we do, that could impact uh, benefits also. Trash and utilities continues to be a nightmare. Uh, the, uh, uh, it's probably gonna be another $8 increase per ton uh, by Mira. And uh, I don't have the tonnage estimate yet, but it's, uh, you know, it, I think it was a $20,000 impact last year and that was an $8 increase then. Um, utilities are, are, are um, you know, we've got favorable prices on electricity, uh, on the generation, uh, we saved a cent and a half, uh, but most of the money uh, is spent on the other charges now, the distribution costs and things like that. So uh, it's early in the process, uh, but, you know, trash and utilities usually uh, are uh, issues of concern. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I anticipate retirements in, in three departments, uh, and um, 
uh, you know, depending on the retirement dates, there could be additional costs by having the, uh, you know, we, we do need to have uh, the retirees uh, work with the replacements on training and orientation. Also, uh, if there's any vacation days that are owed, uh, that could be a cost. Uh, we um, are, uh, you know, there potentially, uh, there's some uh, change in DPW and in buildings that we'll discuss at a different time. Uh, and um, uh, some of uh, th that is impacted by, right, well, the custodian would be impacted by COVID. Uh, also, uh, previously, the fire department has asked for administrative assistance. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll look at that. The other part of personnel is Granby still wants to maintain their, their uh, relationship and shared service with us, but they wanna reduce it a little bit by uh, providing the counseling, which is the large part of it, and, um, and by not providing the programming uh, portion of it for youth services. And that would be something that we, uh, we, would, we would do. Uh, so, um, it's, uh, I don't anticipate that that would be additional cost. If anything, it might be a couple thousand dollars that we took out of programming at this budget because uh, the current budget, because it was tight, we may have to put that back in. But again, it's way uh, or too early um, to tell, but just working on it. Uh, we will maintain our relationship on the ACO with Suffield. That's working really well. Just uh, a couple unknowns that, that actually came up at a meeting I was at today. And so I just uh, added it to, to my um, information to talk to you about is we don't know what the uh, Police Accountability Act impact will be on insurance costs. Uh, so I will try to find that out. But the, uh, the Police Accountability Act is putting requirements in and phasing them in over the next two or three years, including uh, body cams and, and things like that, but also training and, uh, and some other uh, things such as uh, as um, uh, certifications, uh, we are all our officers are, are post certified, which is through the state, uh, and uh, we have great quality police officers, uh, and uh, most of them are retired officers from uh, the state police. Uh, so we're very fortunate uh, to have great uh, police officers, but um, you know, as the Police Economy Act gets digested, uh, there might be a hidden cost in, on the insurance line. Uh, also, the, la the last thing uh, that I wanted to mention is that the trash to energy uh, plant um, could uh, close for processing of burning the waste to energy uh, by June 30th, 2022. Uh, so if that's the case, then the MIRA, of which I'll remind everyone uh, in the public that I am on the board of directors, um, we, uh, the MIRA will uh, have to decide. Uh, they've got contracts with the community, 51 communities through the 27th, uh, through, uh, through uh, 2027, and uh, they will provide the services, but at what cost? We do have opt-out uh, ability uh, that we may want to be looking at uh, two years or three years down the line um, or, or sooner. Uh, and uh, uh, the, But uh, if they close the trash to energy plant, uh, then uh, they, right now it looks like the uh, money, uh, the, uh, the trash would be landfilled uh, the landfill uh, costs don't appear to uh, to be a really big savings over what we're currently paying, but it would not uh, does not appear that it would be an increase. So the, if we were going to have a category called unknowns, uh, it would be the Police Accountability Act and the impact of the closing of the mirror plant. Jim, I had a question about the um, the bond that we're going to basically amortize or. Uh start up this coming year do you know when we're going to have an actual projected amount because i know the number might float a little bit due to the fact that we got additional money for or we're, we're transferring tar funds and all that do you know when that'll be finalized i, expect, I, well, I won't be i will let me let me give you a little bit of the process so the uh, uh the uh representative, the bond representative or our consultant, I should say, uh, probably will have uh, preliminary numbers to me on Monday or Tuesday of next week. 
I will share them with the uh, the board of finance uh, uh, chair as they start to look at their numbers. Uh, we uh, and, and if that's your question, then that's the answer. If your question was when will the process be finished, no. the no, my, my question was, how, when are we going to know what the principal amount's going to be? You know, I guess we anticipated 9.9 .9 million initially. We, we, we will talk. have a good idea, John, of what the principal is um, Monday or Tuesday. Oh, okay. And, and, I, you know, and I'll share that information. Okay. And interest rates right now are beginning to become a little more volatile. So, I mean, there was a time when it was really dirt cheap, but uh, hopefully it'll stick around by the time we actually sign on a dotted line. The, uh, the bond consultant seems to think that it'll still be a favorable market for us, John. Good. Uh, and, and if that's the case, then that will significantly help. Uh, the. And, and we're always very, very conservative on these things that we give as projections uh, to the Board of Finance. Uh, and we err on the side of safety. So uh, it may be a larger number than what it turns out to be in the competitive marketplace. But uh, it's, um, it, you know, it, it was, uh, according to the bond consultant, he said that it's still a pretty good opportunity for us. Uh, and the timing is still pretty good, so we will go to we will go to the marketplace on uh, the second week of July. So it'll be after our budget's already made. Correct. That's why we've got to be very conservative with the projection of uh, of the uh, interest. Just to, you know, in six months there could be a spike. Uh, it won't be what the original projection was back in, in 2018 when we were going before the town with the estimates. But uh, it you know it would it may be a, as you said it may be higher than what it was um, to, you know if ago. we were going today. Right. Yeah, so. Okay, uh, and then we have. Uh, resignations and appointments uh, and uh, I gave you a letter from uh, Brandon Freeman uh, who has uh, is uh, moving out of town uh, and has uh, submitted his resignation from the uh, uh, from the uh, park and rec. Uh, Brandon has been involved in park and rec for many years, uh, has a growing family and has been involved in Little League. Uh, he's done some terrific things uh, for uh, Park and Rec uh, and uh, and for Little League. And we certainly uh, will miss him and thank him for everything he's done. The other resignation is uh, 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 Selectman Doreen uh, has the opportunity to be reappointed to the uh, uh, EDC and has chosen not to uh, ask to be reappointed. Uh, so we, we don't need to accept that as a resignation, but he won't be reappointed at this point. Uh, so we would need a motion to accept the resignation and thank Brandon for his service. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, I'll second that motion and sorry to see him leave. Yeah, he's really uh, done quite a bit for the town. Yeah, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the um, could we have a motion to add seven uh, C F Farmington Valley Health District report? I'll make that motion. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, Joe. What do you got? I kind of had an interesting meeting where uh, they were explaining what they're doing uh, regarding the vaccines. And um, they're allotted uh, so far 300 vaccines a week. And uh, they've been administering them and they kind of took us through the process. Um, but one of the biggest things is uh, it seems like the different regions in Connecticut seem to be interpreting things differently. I've heard people ask uh, you, Jim, you know, when are we going to get our vaccine? And uh, while the state has uh, the guidelines, it seems like there is a little bit of uh, room in there that's been interpreted a little differently from region to region. Uh, but they're sticking primarily you know, with what the uh, governor has released and, and following those guidelines. They're hoping that they get additional uh, supplies of the vaccine. Uh, but right now that's pretty much what they're limited to. And the, uh, 
as far as the transmission goes, it, it was interesting since the summer into early fall, their numbers had tripled from where they were during the summer and then tripled again after the uh, holidays. So, you know, the, the diligence of uh, abiding by the uh, guidelines for transmission seems to be really important. The other thing was that they were saying that they really want to keep the schools open for quite a few reasons and they're, they're doing everything they can. Uh, and they wanted to reiterate that the transmission of the virus in the schools has not uh, been that much of a problem. Most of the transmissions have been in homes, family to family, and also occupational. Uh, but as far as the schools go, they've been doing pretty well with that. And the uh, contract uh, contact tracing seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, they've been able to uh, kind of maintain where they need to be with that. But it certainly is a challenging time for them. And uh, uh, my hat's off to them and all the work that they're doing and keeping up with everything. They are certainly doing a great job, uh, and uh, they've been a great resource for us. Uh, the um, At the governor's conference call this, this evening, uh, it was mentioned that uh, uh, the, um, the state is continuing, first of all, that they were the first state in the country to have all the nursing homes uh, vaccine uh, folks get the, the uh, vaccine. Um, and uh, they uh, also uh, are aggressively trying to uh, get a million um, uh, vaccines, I forget how many, uh, in people's arms. Uh, I forget uh, what the time frame is on that. But it, yeah, oh, it, it, there's a category called 1B, uh, and they're transitioning to 1B right now. 1A is um, you know, nursing homes, uh, emergency responders. Um, and uh, emergency responders, ambulance, fire, police, of which uh, uh, that has been, those, all of our folks in those categories have not been vac vaccinated yet, but they are in the process of being so, and many have gotten that. But they're, um, so the 1B category, they're going to uh, take it from age 75 up to age 65, and they anticipate that that will be a million people will be eligible for phase 1B. So they're looking at how it is that they can they can make things happen, and one of the you know they said they they you know Walgreens and CVS are helping, but you can't do mass mass quantities with that. Farmington Valley Health District is doing mass quantities with with clinics, uh, and um, we uh, have uh, we have uh, through our emergency operations <laughs> have let the state and the uh, the Farmington Valley Health District know that we would provide a space for vaccinations, for mass vaccinations here in town. So uh, the, one of the problems going on right now is the towns are getting the information after the newspapers get it. So the newspapers get it, they publish it. Residents ask us questions that we can't answer because the program is not going to be officially rolled out until tomorrow. So when they roll it out, they're going to say, okay, if, if you know, you can go online and they give you the website. If you don't want to go online or don't have the um, uh, computer, uh, then uh, you can make a call and they'll tell you how to do that. But what it is, is, you know, you know, in the half recurring yesterday and today, age 75 or older, you can get your, your, your vaccine. Well, the answer is, yeah after tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, so you know, it, it, and that's not a criticism of, of the state at this point, because they're, you know, they're, they're doing some fantastic things of trying to get the vaccines where they need to be and to get more vaccines. But um, it's a little frustrating from a local perspective when you get 10 phone calls at senior services, and you don't have the uh, information you can give them. So hopefully tomorrow we'll have information that we can publish and let people know, but they, they're going to be very aggressive. They're uh, they're looking to uh, as I reach for my note from the, uh, from the governor's office uh, uh, governor's meeting. They're looking at um, a uh, you know by to be uh, in good compliance with vaccines uh, by the summertime. So it uh, it could be it, it, you know, hopefully that's all around the corner. So Jim, anything um, else, Joe? Yeah, it's not Farmington Valley Health District. I don't know if I can slip this in. I had a little busy 
week, but uh, CISWA also had uh, their annual meeting. I just wanted to mention, in case you didn't know it, that apparently they're going to hold off on any dues this year and use last year's money because they weren't able to do much budget-wise with the um, pandemic and, and so on. The other thing was they had Mike Payne uh, attend the meeting. And um, not only is Mike the owner of Payne's, but he's also on the board of selectmen in Simsbury. And he went through what towns have been uh, trying as far as minimizing the amount of uh, waste and so on. And I, I didn't know if we'd want to uh, invite him to a, a meeting or whatever, but um, there's quite a bit that different towns have been attempting to do through pains. And he was kind of relating the success of it, how much they were able to reduce uh, solid waste and so on, but um, it, it might be something to take a look at in light of that's one of the budget drivers for this year, and he may be able to give us some ideas that may uh, be able to help us. Uh, and that's certainly a good idea, and I'll contact Mike uh, to, to, to do that. Uh, I, I speak with Mike frequently, also have, have been part of the uh, the initiative from the from the uh, state deep uh, uh, about reduction and uh, of waste you know, along with a long term strategy. And one of the things that um, that the commissioner Dykes mentioned today is, you know, they can look at the garbage pail and see opportunity to reduce 30 percent of what's in there. It's so, amazing. Yeah. So if by reducing the 30 percent, uh, then you know it's it's less that is tipped uh, that has to be disposed of somewhere, uh, but the other the caveat to that is the thirty percent if it's you know compost or something like that well there's you know you, you have to handle that <laughs> so uh, it's not uh, composting uh, uh, anaerobic uh, digestion are not uh, maybe solutions but they're not cheap either or I shouldn't say it, they're not inexpensive. So uh, thank you for that, and uh, I will. Uh, uh, I'll ask uh, Mike to talk trash. <laughs> and um, the uh, public comment, uh, and seeing none, uh, then uh, the next order of business would be to go into executive session to discuss personnel issues, and um, the. Uh, I would need a motion. I'll make that motion, Jim. And that would be at 742. Second that. And there would be uh, no votes. Uh, and uh, we will, um, after we make this vote, we will say goodbye to um, Granby Public Access TV. And uh, once we get out of executive session, then we will. Um, uh, once we get out of executive session, then we will go ahead and uh, adjourn. So uh, at uh, 7.42, we, uh, we uh, did, did I take a vote? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Because I usually write the, the vote down and I didn't see it there. I said I must have talked over it. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, we will go into executive session at 7.40, uh, well, now it's 7.43. Uh, and there will not be any additional uh, business. We'll just come out and adjourn. Uh, and um, uh, let's go into executive session.